The Atlanta Braves get a series win over the Los Angeles Angels this past weekend and creep closer to the New York Mets in the NL East, but they lose Adam Duvall for the rest of the season in the process, and Ian Anderson has another terrible outing, leaving some question marks and some potential holes to be filled for the Atlanta Braves leading up to the trade deadline. We'll discuss all of that on today's episode of Lockdown Braves, so let's get into it. You are Locked On Braves, your daily Atlanta Braves podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, and welcome back to Locked On Braves, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta, where we cover your favorite Atlanta sports teams each and every day. I'm your host, Jake Mastriani. You can follow me on Twitter at shortstopball. Check out my bio there to see where I am covering the game of baseball, including the Atlanta Braves in written form over at tomahawktake.com. Also, make sure you follow the podcast on Twitter at Locked On underscore Braves and subscribe to the Locked On Braves podcast wherever you get your podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button, that thumbs up button, and that notification bell. And thanks for making Locked On Braves your first listen every day. We post episodes daily, five days a week, Monday through Friday, and are free and available on all platforms. Today's episode is brought to you by Blue Nile. Make sure your moment sparkles with jewelry from BlueNile.com and Going on now is the Blue Nile Anniversary Sale. Save up to 40% on classic fine jewelry and 25% on engagement ring settings. Shop stress-free and find your forever piece. Go to BlueNile.com today. On today's Monday episode of Locked On Braves, we're going to recap the series from the weekend. And the Braves getting a series win over the Angels. Talk about Otani, the crowd there. I was there for all three games over the weekend. Talk about the Adam Duvall news and what this means for the trade deadline and what Alex Anthopoulos may need to be adding to his uh, shopping list. And also Ian Anderson, another rough outing. How much longer of a leash can the Braves give him in the starting rotation? Also want to give you my updated top 10 prospect rankings for the Braves with their newly signed draft pick. So we'll talk about that and talk about who has been signed to this point as they've pretty much wrapped up the entire signing class so far. So big day here on Monday, Unlocked on Braves. But let's start with the weekend series. The Braves do get a series win over the Angels, which with the Angels team and the way they're struggling without Mike Trout, you know, that had to be at least a minimum of what you did against this team. A sweep obviously would have been preferable, but you get a series win and keep winning series, certainly what, you want to do the rest of the way, and I think they'll be just fine. As far as my experience, I haven't been back to Truist Park this season since opening day, and obviously opening day comes with a lot of hoopla and coming off a World Series win, and that was fantastic in its own right until, honestly, the game started, and then it got freezing, and then all the balls started to die at the warning track, and the Braves lost. But this week, this past weekend against the Angels, it was just, I mean, it was incredible, the crowds there. And I, this is our first time taking our two little ones there. And honestly, it was a bit overwhelming with all the people there. These were the fourth, fifth, and sixth largest crowds in the history of the ballpark. Obviously, everybody coming out to see Shohei Otani. And it was the largest attended series in the ballpark's history. So a lot of people there in Atlanta over the weekend, but had a lot of fun there. The kids enjoyed it. And we enjoyed it as well. Had a great time. And obviously those first two games, much better than the third one, which we did not stick around long in that third game. It was smoltering hot out there. And my two little ones were not going to be still, but had a lot of fun. So just wanted to share that with you. Uh, also, a shout out to Thomas Evans from Raleigh, uh, North Carolina, who stopped to say hello. Really appreciate that, Thomas, and hope you're doing well. Hope you enjoyed your time in Atlanta. Uh, but we did. We certainly had a, a great time there, and I can't wait to go back. The Braves inched a little bit closer to the Mets. They got within half again, half a game after Saturday's win as the Mets lost the first two games of their series to the Padres. But with what transpired on Sunday, the Braves come into Monday's game a game and a half back of the NL East lead. And the Mets are off. They're idle on Monday, and the Braves are playing, so got a chance to pick up half a game on Monday. But the big news from the weekend, Adam Duvall having season-ending wrist surgery. 
Certainly a tough break for Adam Duvall and the Braves. Uh, Adam Duvall likely headed to free agency. This is his last season under contract with the Braves. So he'll be a free agent after this year. So he has played likely his last game in an Atlanta Braves uniform. And look, I've been very critical of Adam Duvall this season. You listen to the podcast, you know that. But he's still been a big piece of this offense, and he's really gotten going as the Braves have gotten going in early June. And a lot of that, I think, has to do, and we talked about this before, moving him to a corner outfield position, kind of taking some of that stress off of him that comes along with playing such a primary defensive position in center field. So I certainly think that had a lot to do with, look, Adam Duvall is a great piece to a lineup. He can you know, hit for power, obviously, down in your order. He plays great corner defense, and he was solid in center field as well, held it, held things down there until they brought up Michael Harris. So, I mean, he's a key piece of this team. That is a big loss. The Braves, I believe, were already looking for a left-handed outfield bat to replace Guillermo Heredia on the bench. Now, perhaps you start to look for a more everyday type of outfield bat that you can plug into your lineup. Haven't really done the research yet to see who all is available. Obviously, Andrew Benintendi is a name that has been come or come up for a while, at least among his Braves fans, as a player that they would like to see the Braves go get. I still think the Braves would easily get outbid for Benintendi, who may be one of the best bats on the trade market coming into the trade deadline. But I think this certainly shifts things for Alex Anthopoulos and what his primary focus is going into the trade deadline. So hate this news for Adam Duvall. Um, but as I kind of said, going into the weekend, if something like this is going to happen, you're going to have a player get injured and lose them for the season. You want it to happen now. That way you can at least prepare for it, adjust to it. And hopefully now Alex Antopoulos can try to find a solid replacement for Adam Duvall in the outfield and give that big bat that the Braves need down in their order to replace Adam Duvall. Obviously, you have Eddie Rosario, who can play out there every day, and he's going to be on the strong side of a platoon anyway, being left-handed. So he can fill that role, and hopefully Eddie gets going. We see the Eddie we saw last year, and that would certainly take care of that and the loss of Adam Duvall. But still think you'd at least want to get some type of replacement for Adam Duvall uh, to, to fill in there if needed. The other situation that is continually evolving is Ian Anderson and I said we didn't stick around long for the game on Sunday well you can understand why after he gave up five runs on six hits in the first inning it was a rough outing for Ian Anderson you thought maybe coming into the break you know he had some good outings where he at least didn't give up a lot of runs still wasn't going deep still didn't look very sharp but at least he wasn't giving up a ton of runs that was not the case on Sunday, and now I think it brings into question what do you do with Ian Anderson and what do you do in the back of the starting rotation going into the trade deadline? I mean, Ian Anderson has a 6.32 ERA in his last seven starts and a 1.82 whip. We're talking about a pretty elongated stretch of just not being very good for Ian Anderson. So, do you continue to ride this out and just hope that? He figures it out and becomes the guy we saw, you know, the past two seasons, the guy we've seen in the postseason. Or do you give somebody else a chance? Do you give Kyle Muller a shot in the rotation? Do you go out and trade for a middle of the rotation starter? These are all tough questions that Alex Anthopoulos and the Braves are going to have to answer over the next week or week and a half. Ian Anderson is only scheduled to get one more start before the trade deadline. Can you really afford to wait until that start and – and, and then that's really just become reliant on that one start to whether or not you think he can pick it back up going forward or whether you think you need to hurry and make a move. It's going to be a tough decision. Look, I want to be very clear about Ian Anderson. He's 24 years old. I still think very highly of the guy, and I think he can be a very good pitcher. I've talked about on here ad nauseum. There are adjustments that he needs to make, and he's just not making them. And obviously his command is just not even where it was before. And he wasn't really a great command pitcher, even when he was throwing the ball well. So there are definitely some adjustments he needs to make. But again, he's 24 years old. Uh, it's kind of hard to believe because he came up with such poise and moxie and the way that he's pitched in the postseason. Still a very young guy who's trying to 
you know, still feel his way out at the major league level. And the league, like I said before, is adjusting to him. I think it's time for him to make some adjustments. And I don't know that he can do that on the fly at the big league level. So it'd be very curious to see what happens with Ian Anderson, what the Braves do at the deadline if they go after a starting pitcher. Uh, but for one thing's for certain, Alex Antopoulos has a very busy next couple of weeks. And then I wanted to mention Shohei Otani. Look, obviously, that's why there were the crowds were so big over the weekend. It was a lot of a lot of fun to watch him. Um, he was brilliant through six innings on Friday night, striking out brave batter after brave batter. The Angels fans next to me kept saying, "Man, he's nasty." And I just it got to the point where I just couldn't wait for the Braves to break out. And all it took was for me to take an ice cream run as the kids were obviously not ready to sit in the seats for a full nine innings. Only way I could keep them around for the game much longer was to go get ice cream. Left to go get ice cream, and the Braves put up a seven spot. So you are welcome. Uh, that's obviously what led to the Braves finally getting to Shohei Otani. But he was fun. Otani hit a home run over the weekend. Uh, I hate Mike Trout wasn't in the lineup. Uh, obviously wanted to see both of those guys, but at least I got to see Otani. And he did put on a show with what he what he did over the weekend in Atlanta. So that was a lot of fun if you were there. All right, next, I want to give you my updated top 10 prospect rankings after the MLB draft, including the recent draft picks, and tell you who has been signed. We'll talk about that next. Whether you're ready to pop the question or you're celebrating a milestone moment, find jewelry as unique as her with the modern convenience of online shopping at BlueNile.com. Blue Nile has simple online tools that let you choose the diamond shape, size, as well as setting style. Blue Nile's Vince Jewelers will then handcraft her perfect engagement ring, making each ring one of a kind. If you're looking for fine jewelry but having trouble choosing, Blue Nile has jewelry experts on hand 24-7, available via phone or chat to help you find a memorable gift at every budget. Make your moment sparkle with jewelry from BlueNile.com. And going on now is the Blue Nile anniversary sale. Save up to 40% on classic fine jewelry pieces and 25% on engagement ring settings. Plus, every order is insured, ships free, and arrives in discreet packaging that won't give away what's inside. Shop stress-free and find your forever piece. Go to BlueNile.com today. The Braves recently just wrapped up the 2022 MLB draft, and they pretty much signed everybody they've picked to this point. Uh, they ended up signing uh, for, fourth round pick uh, Dave McCabe over the weekend as well. It was one that I was waiting on, and they get him signed. So that is pretty much the entire class that I thought they were going to sign. The only ones left unsigned are Landon Harper, relief pitcher out of Southern Miss. I can't imagine they don't get him at slot value or or much under, or there is no slot value for 14th round. But I can't imagine they don't get him signed. And then Noah Williams, the high schooler uh, from the West Coast, I never thought they were going to sign him regardless. So uh, I don't think they get anything done there, and they are honestly have run out of pool money to spend. And then surprising one is Kashawn Ogans, the 20th round pick out of Cal. I thought that would be an easy sign, but maybe they just haven't got to him yet. Uh, which probably is most likely the case. So, again, those are your three left unsigned. I think the only one that doesn't get done is Noah Williams, 18th round pick. But everybody else is signed to this point, and obviously your big ones uh, have been signed. 12 of the first 13, or all 13, uh, or you've, all the first 13 picks are signed. As I said, McCabe uh, was was announced late on Sunday. So, I wanted to give you my updated top 10 prospects list. Not going to do some numbers uh, this week, stats like I typically do. Uh, we'll get back into that on next Monday. But I wanted to give you my new updated top 10 prospect list. We've had some graduations. Obviously, the new draft picks, which I think a lot of these draft picks are going to slide into the Braves' top 10 rather easily for a number of reasons. The Braves' farm system is just not that great right now and i think a lot of these picks the braves made had a have a lot of upside and a lot of potential so here's my updated top 10 prospects list i got von grissom at number one i think he's very clearly the braves top prospect right now he got moved up to double a mississippi and just continued to hit there i think he's by far the braves top prospect i got kyle muller at number two he's just sitting there waiting he's been Really good at AAA this year. He's just waiting for another opportunity to get called up. I got Jared Schuster at number three, the Braves' top pick. 
from last year. He's been really good uh, this season. I've talked about it. You know, I think he and Kyle Muller have been two of the best arms in the system. At four, I have A.J. smith Shaver. Um, you know, kind of struggle with command at times, but you look at those strikeout numbers and what he is doing, I think he's a very high upside arm. He was the most, you know, high upside pick the Braves took last year, I thought, uh, and he is he's certainly looking like that. So I got A.J. smith Shaver at number four. And then recent draft pick Cole Phillips. I got him at number five which may seem like a bit of a stretch, but I think he has the biggest and most potential of the draft picks that the Braves just took. It's going to be a while before we see that. Obviously, him coming off Tommy John surgery, but the, the kid just has so much potential when you can throw that hard. You know, if he can come back from injury and do that and continue to develop as a starter, you're talking about top of the rotation and stuff. So, that's kind of how I do my rankings on here as I did them in the offseason as well. I went based on strictly upside, and I think Cole Phillips has a, a ton of upside. Obviously, we have to see what he looks like post-injury, but everything before the injury tells me that there's a ton of upside there for Cole Phillips. I got Owen Murphy, the Braves' first pick in the past draft at number six. I think he's a very solid um, pitcher. I think he has you know very projectable frame you know i don't know that he has the upside of, of cole phillips as a top of the rotation starter but i think he's very you know safely a mid rotation starter uh, but very excited about owen murphy so i have him at six at number seven i have freddie tarnock i'm still big on freddie tarnock and he just got promoted as well to triple a uh i still think i still believe in the arm and i think he had the chance to be something special one day whether that's as a starter or if they ultimately move him to the bullpen. So I'm very high on Freddie Tarnick is still at this point. At number eight, uh, David McCabe, uh, the bat that the Braves just took in the fourth round. I'm really high on this bat. I talked about it when evaluating the draft. I think he instantly becomes one of the best bats in the system, which is not saying much, but I think this kid is going to hit. I'm very excited to see what he does at the professional level. So I have David McCabe at number eight. Another recent draft pick, J.R. Ritchie, their second pick in this past draft. Again, I think another very solid arm that has some potential upside in there as well. So I have J.R. Ritchie at number nine. And then at number 10, I have Spencer Schwellenbach. Uh, again, we haven't really seen him either because of injury. But uh, again, another kid that I think has a ton of upside potential as a pitcher. So really excited to see him get back, get healthy, and see what he can do. So those are my top 10 prospects for the Braves. Again, I I rank mine based, based on upside and a little bit of projectability for you know guys like Moeller. But those are that's who I went with in my top 10. Let me know what you think, who you think should be added in there, who should be booted out. But that's what I'd go with right now if I'm ranking the Braves farm system. Again, it's a depleted farm system for the most part. That's why I inject a lot of these new draft picks because they're unknown. And a lot of the prospects the Braves have, we've, We've seen what they can do, and unfortunately, it's just not as exciting. But, I mean, you look at the talent that's just come through the system that has led to a World Series, and you can understand why. But I am very excited about these new draft picks in the top 10 that I just mentioned. And some other guys as well. Look, Ambioris Tavares, a young international signing. Still haven't seen the professional level. Obviously, some big upside there. I still like Bryce Elder. You know, Tucker Davidson, I think they can be solid starters at the big league level at the back of the rotation. Certainly nothing wrong with that. But again, I'm going on potential upside and I'm looking at the ceilings for some of these players. And then Drake Baldwin, another guy the Braves just took, the catcher they took in the third round. I'm really high on him as well. I think that bat is going to play. So I'd have him, you know, probably in the top 15 at, at least uh, or the top 20 at least, maybe in the top 15. Um, but those are my prospect rankings. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. I'm really excited to see what these new guys do. I'm glad they got them signed and wrapped up quickly. Now, hopefully, uh, they can get into some short season ball and get some at-bats, get some innings under them so we can get our eyes on them. All right, next, we'll turn to page two. Monday, as the Braves begin a interdivision series against the Philadelphia Phillies, an opportunity to kind of bury their division mates with a good series in Philadelphia. BetOnline.net is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your betting needs. Find all your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games. 
find reviews and news of every league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, esports, and even golf. BetOnline continues to be the top online resource for all your sport wagering information from live in-game betting, scores, and podcasts. They have you covered. Head to Bet Online today or use your mobile device to learn more about the action happening today. Bet Online, where the game starts. Braves have an important three game series in Philadelphia starting on Monday night. A Phillies team that just got swept by the Cubs in an offense that really struggling after the All Star break. They scored two, two, and three runs in those three games against the Cubs. Like I said, getting swept. Not really what you anticipate from a Phillies offense who, without Bryce Harper, still can slug uh, and hit some home runs. So, will be interesting uh, to see what offense they bring in this series against Atlanta. And the Braves have their ace, Max Freed, going on the mound, who has had plenty of rest uh, getting ready for this matchup on Monday night, going up against Ranger Suarez. Suarez looked pretty good over his last seven starts, but he's giving up nine earned runs and two starts over 11 innings against the Braves this year. So hopefully the Braves can get to him again. And again, hopefully Max Freed, well-rested, goes out and pitches a gem of a game and takes advantage of a Phillies offense that appears to be struggling a little bit at the moment. Spencer Strider and Aaron Nola face off on Tuesday, which should be a really good matchup. Nola has been on a roll. He's gone at least seven innings in his last eight starts, and he's given up two earned or less in five of them. So that's going to be a battle on Tuesday night. Aaron Nola has been great. He's looked like vintage Aaron Nola. And Spencer Strider, honestly, has not been as effective in his last couple of outings. I think that long break that he got hopefully does him some good, and hopefully we get to see him being back to his dominant self. And then Charlie Morton versus Kyle Gibson. Uh, Kyle Gibson hasn't quite been announced for that Wednesday afternoon game, but likely is a starter in that one. Gibson has given up, gave up six earned runs and four and a third against the Cubs in that first game after the All-Star break. Was really good in his last two starts before that, but a 5-1-7 ERA over his last seven starts. So uh, hopefully the Braves' offense can get going on Wednesday afternoon. I know they struggle a bit in day games. They struggle in the last games of series, um, but – Hopefully, it's an opportunity for the Braves offense to kind of break out there. And hopefully, Charlie Morton has a solid game. He was solid against the Angels, I thought, his last time out. Again, being at the game and watching them with kids, I couldn't exactly key in uh, on a lot of what's going on uh, from the stands, from the 300 section. But I thought Morton was was okay. The walks were a bit of a problem. You know, didn't give up a ton of runs or a ton of hits or anything, but uh, you know, again, I, I just thought it was an okay outing from, again, what I could see while making sure that my son didn't jump over the railing or get caught in one of the, the fold-up seats. But uh, looking looking forward to Charlie, Mart- Charlie Morton uh, getting going, having a, another, you know, really good outing. Uh, looking forward to this series. Again, the Phillies, Braves have a really good cushion on the Phillies in the division and the wild card. Would love to see them extend that and kind of put some doubt into the Phillies' mind leading up to the, the trade deadline where, you know, hopefully – they don't feel the like they should go out and make a big move. And, you know, that could take one contender out of it. And Braves can potentially help in that by having a good series against the Phillies. So looking forward to that, and hopefully they can get the job done. And that will do it for this episode. Thanks for making Locked on Braves your first to listen every day. Again, we'll be back tomorrow uh, talking about game one of this series and any other news that comes out from Adam Duvall and Ian Anderson fallout. Uh, Now make your second listen, the Locked On MLB podcast. MLB expert Paul Francis Sullivan brings humor, passion, and a unique perspective on every team and the biggest stories around the league. Follow the number one daily league-wide podcast, Locked On MLB, on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcast. And thanks again for listening. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at Locked On underscore Braves. You can follow me at Shortstop Ball. Also, make sure you rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast wherever you get your podcast, and we will talk to you next time.